Hey there, Michael Crawford from Mac Photography. I'm testing two lenses today for you, the Panasonic 45 to 175 and also the Panasonic 100 to 300 millimeter lenses. Both these lenses are micro four thirds. I'm off to the park to give them a run. I'm going to try and find a, a nice brick wall to shoot at and um, I'm going to set them up on the uh, GH3 here and take some pictures and then we'll go back to uh, back home and look at the results. Okay, I've got two lenses to review today, um, both Panasonic offerings, the Panasonic 45 to 175 and also the Panasonic 100 to 300 millimeter lens. They both are made in Japan. They are both um, micro four thirds lenses naturally. Uh, the 45 to 175 has a minimum focusing distance of 0.9 meters, if that's important to you and the 100 to 300 millimeter has a minimum focusing distance of 1.5 meters. Okay, looking at the build qualities of these lenses, uh, we'll look at the 45 to 175. Um, it has a large rubberized zoom ring. That's that part. So taking up the bulk of the body, it's got a nice um, feel to it, nice resistance. It doesn't have a stop. This is an electronic zoom system. So what happens is as you turn this, it turns a motor inside the lens which zooms. You also have the option to zoom with a button here, um, wide and telephoto, which is nice if you're making videos and you want a very smooth zoom. Um, I will test later on whether that has steps in it or not. And it's also got a focus by wire system at the end here. The smaller one comes with the lens hood naturally. Lens hood fits nice and snug. No rattling of the lens hood. Lens cap and filter size is 46 millimeters. And it appears um, I've got the silver version. I'm not sure if it comes in any other colors. Sometimes these lenses come in black or silver. I do have the silver one. It says it's nano coated which I guess is a anti-reflective um, coating that they put on the lens, similar to Nikon's. Um, nano, as in nano-sized particles, went into the coating. Whether or not that's significant or not, I have no idea. But um, it is a coated lens. Um, I will try and check for lens flare later by shooting into the sun. Okay, so that's that one. Put that away. And let's have a look at the other one. This one is much more substantial. Um, I don't know if you can see the size. I'll take the lens hoods off. Uh, so we're talking probably twice the size here. Um, it's a good size larger, this um, 100 to 300. Now the 100 to 300 has a 67 millimeter filter thread on the 
on the outside there. Whoop, that's a bit squeaky, isn't it? That's just a filter. Um, it's all plastic construction, so that's the sound of plastic, yeah. And it's got a optical stabilization switch on the side, which the 45 to 175 does not have. It's, um, it's similar um, sort of materials used. It's got the plastic on the outside. It's got the large rubber zoom ring here. In this case, the zoom is mechanical and you can actually see the lens moving in and out. The zoom on the 45 to 175, of course, like I just said, is electric. So there's no stop, but it's still nice and um, it's got a ni nice amount of resistance there, not too flimsy. This is focused by wire as well, so there's no stop on the focus ring. The focus ring here is on the outside. It zooms in and out, internal focusing. So the front element does not turn or come out as you focus. Um, they, Although these are reasonably cheap lenses, um, the 100 to 300 of course has an equivalent um, length on full frame as 200 to 600. So that's a massive zoom range there, absolutely huge. And of course the 45 to 175 will have a zoom range equivalent to 90 to 350. The 100 to 300 of course comes with the lens hood, which you simply attach like so. Nice fitting lens hood and everything is nice and snug, appears to be good quality. The weight of it is quite more substantial than the 45 to 175. I'm now going to take some pictures with them and uh, we can compare them at different focal lengths. I'm going to do uh, pictures at 45, 100, 175 and 300. That way we can compare the images and uh, see which lens works out better. Of course I'm going to shoot all these wide open and uh, we'll look at them back at the uh, computer. Okay, looking at the 45 to 175 mil lens, you can see at 45 millimeters, the lens is extremely sharp in the center. The edges are sharp. Uh, there's good contrast. I haven't done anything with this um, with these pictures to boost contrast or anything. Um, looks nice and sharp all round at 45 millimeters. Okay, now going to 100 millimeters and again looking in the corner, nice and sharp. Uh, looking over at this corner, still sharp. The center, very good. Okay, at 175, the 45 to 175, at 175, the maximum telephoto length, it is looking, it's a little bit softer in the corner there, uh, a little bit softer all round, um, but not a lot, it's still very usable, very good. Um, nothing too surprising there, that's what I was expecting. Now going to the 100 to 300 millimeter lens at 100 and we can see that it is very sharp in the middle there. Quite sharp on the edges. Uh, just looking at the edges here going around, uh, it appears to be sharp all around at 100 to 100 to 300. Going to a midway point, about 183 millimeters, um, and I was trying to compare it like with uh, the 175, and you can see it's still sharp. Yeah, it's comparable with the 45 to 175 that's for sure um, now going up to 300 millimeters the extreme telephoto length and you can see it's become quite a bit soft 
in the middle. Let's go to the edge. And yeah, you can see it's really, really softer on the edges compared to what it was. Uh, this side's not too bad. There might be a bit of um, variation in this lens. Um, but overall it's quite sharp. I would say the 45 to 175 was a tad sharper, just a little bit sharper. But overall they're both quite similar. Um, it would really come down to what focal length you needed and uh, and the handling of course of these lenses. Okay, in summary I would say that the 45 to 175 millimeter power zoom lens is def definitely the choice for me. Um, it gives very sharp images. The optical stabil stabilization is good. Um, it's nice in practice that it doesn't zoom in and out. It's um, the bo body of the lens stays the same length regardless of the zoom length and the focusing. Um, yeah, it's well made, it's light and easy to handle, gives excellent results and I would highly recommend that. I found that the 100 to 300 was a little bit too long hand holding, very difficult to hold that lens steady at 300 millimeters. Uh, I would not recommend trying to do that too much um, unless you absolutely had to. Obviously a tripod would definitely be in order with that lens and then you're going to need a bigger body able to carry the weight of that larger lens. I hope you have enjoyed this review and we'll come back again to see some more reviews in the future. Thank you.